the Tesla Performance Model 3 has a 0 to 100 km per hour acceleration of 3.3 seconds, faster than many supercars that we see in Singapore's roads. Yet, at the same time, this is known as one of the safest cars in the world. The Tesla Model 3, together with other Tesla models like the S, X, and Y, have got 5-star safety ratings, great certification, top safety picks by the IIHS, the European Safety Agencies. We have seen amazing test drive videos and also the crash test videos where the car is just able to go through a lot of harm relatively unscathed to the passengers. The whole car is built from the ground up, designed for safety. So with that paradox in mind, today I have with me Anil, who is a member of Tesla Owners Singapore Club, to learn about what's it like driving one of the world's safest and fastest cars. My name is Darren, and click subscribe to stay updated with more videos on Tesla. Anil, how did your journey with Tesla begin? Hey Darren, first of all, thank you so much for hosting me on your channel. Super excited uh, to do this. Uh, so let me quickly introduce myself and then uh, let's talk about how my journey with the Tesla started. Uh, my name is Anil, Anil Sagar. I've been in Singapore for four years. Uh, I love Singapore. And uh, by profession, I'm a technical software engineer and I work for one of the famous companies that you use every day to actually navigate from point A to point B and to do search results as well. Um, that's about me and uh, let me talk about the Tesla Model 3 now and how my journey started. My journey with Tesla started uh, way back in 2009. You might uh, feel it surprising. Um, that is almost like uh, 12 years back. Uh, how I came to know about Tesla is quite fascinating. I started my career as a software engineer with a technology called uh, Drupal. Uh, you might be wondering what is this Drupal technology? This technology is actually used to create websites. It's an open source platform uh, to create websites. And Tesla earliest website was actually built on top of this technology. Wow. So that's how I came to know about the Tesla. And I'm also passionate about cars and climate change and sustainability. And the interest on Tesla grown over the period of time. Uh, that's how I got to know about the Tesla. And from 2009, I've been tracking Tesla as a company, and after the SpaceX, I became a big fan of Elon and Tesla. So since 2009, a very long journey, the interest started first with technology, from the website, then the engineering and the car itself. How did the interest go from loving the engineering and the car and the technology to eventually owning a piece of the hardware, this Tesla Performance Ball 3? How I own this car? From 2016, when this car was launched, it was my dream to actually own a Tesla. Uh, I thought first it'll, it'll be like a dream only and I will never get a chance to own a car because that time I was way back in India and it is impossible to own a sports car like this way back in India that time in 2016. And when I came to Singapore, everything changed. In 2020 February, uh, when the Tesla announced that uh, they're going to launch the Singapore region, I was one of the first one to actually book the car and place the order online. Even before the world came to know that Tesla opened the site, I was actually tracking with the script and I came to know that they launched the Singapore version of their website and I immediately reserved the car. So that's how I uh, got to uh, own this dream car. It's an amazing story and the commitment and passion over time from tracking the website to actually getting the car eventually. I know this car has a reputation for safety, like being very safe. Why is that? A uh, lot of people think safety as a structural part of the car but Tesla has changed the game uh, that's very much applicable to the ICE cars the gasoline engine engines internal combustion engine cars but uh, this car has many software features that enables that additional layer of safety you will see why in next few minutes when we get inside the car but before that let's actually look at outside the car what actually makes Tesla not just one of the safest cars in the world but in my opinion and as well as uh, in terms of Elon if you have watched some presentation Tesla Model 3 is the safest car in the world in the world many find it surprising but it is a true fact according to the many rating agencies which has given the rating after a lot of testing what was the design decisions that actually led to this to this being one of the safest cars in the world? I think the fundamental uh, principle of Tesla 
building the cars and manufacturing cars is keeping the safety in mind. That's the very important aspect that they follow in every design of any car that they manufacture. Having said that, when we look at the gasoline engine cars and when we look at the electric vehicles, the safety layer is far beyond when you compare to the gasoline engine cars because the reason is the engine. You will find an engine in the front of the vehicle or in the back of the vehicle when it comes to gasoline engine cars but in electric vehicles there is no engine that actually gives a lot of room where it can absorb the impact of crash or impact of uh, any kind of an obstacle so that the occupants inside the car is super safe so what i'm hearing is first there's this the fundamental okay we're going from ice to evs internal combustion engine to ev so is this structurally safer already that's one step the next step are uh, the design decisions engineering decisions that tesla specifically chose to make to make the ev ev even safer than the industry norm absolutely we will go into each and every aspect of the car first let's starting with external and let's see how that uh, uh, is making the tesla model 3 according to me and according to tesla and according to elon the safest car in the world so let's do that. I'm going to dismount the camera. I'll be behind the camera as Anil walks us through the hardware and the software that makes this the safest car in the world. Let's start with the fundamental safety or feature that every electric vehicle comes with. That is, there is no engine. What does it mean? Let's open uh, the front bay. Let's see what is inside. As you can see, surprisingly, there's no engine. As you can see, the entire uh, trunk, uh, what we call the front boot, is is open space. That means whenever the crash happens, this entire empty space absorbs the energy and it keeps the occupants relatively safe. When you think about the ICE cars, like gasoline engine cars, there is a huge engine where the energy travels through that engine block all the way into the inside of the car occupants and it impacts you whenever, unfortunately, if you get into a crash. So this is the main feature that enables the safety but there are a lot of other features that adds on to the safety ratings of the Tesla Model 3. I have a follow-up question. So not all EVs have the empty space in front or have the front. What's different about Tesla compared to other EVs that don't have that space even though there's no engine? That's a great question Darren. Yes, you're right. Some of the EVs actually doesn't have the free space in the front. The reason behind that is the cooling systems that actually helps uh, cool your car inside and some of the electric components like batteries and all packed in the front. So that actually minimizes the safety and increases the chance of uh, uh, injuries whenever people get into the crashes. But luckily most of the EVs does have a free space in the front. So whenever there is a frontal collision, there is a lot of energy absorption and uh, passengers inside will be relatively safe. Okay, let's close the hood and uh, let's go to the other parts. As you can see here, these little dots are the sensors. Uh, those can actually detect if any obstacle is uh, near the car. And it shows in the real time how far is that obstacle. Not only that, there is a radar behind this um, number plate that can actually detect the objects even farther uh, than these sensors. So all the sensors on the radar actually can keep track is there an obstacle or how fast are you traveling if there is an obstacle how soon you will reach that so that it can alert you before you reach there in terms of when you are distracted driving or somebody suddenly comes into your path. I have a follow up question Adil. Tesla and Elon has said that they're moving away from radar or, and LiDAR. So people say, how can a car be safe without radar and LiDAR? What's your take? This is the most uh, controversial question uh, and most debated question as well in the EV community, especially when it comes to autonomous driving and the safety. And uh, let me give you a simple comparison. How do we humans uh, navigate from point A to point B? Do we shoot lasers and then based on the uh, laser signals do we navigate or we, do we use the vision to actually go from one place to another place. So we use the vision, right? We don't shoot the lasers from the eyes uh, like some super uh, heroes. So uh, the same concept applies to the car as well. According to the Elon and Tesla team, 
uh, they use the cameras. As you can see, there are cameras around the car. There are a total eight cameras that constantly observing all the angles, 360 degrees around the car. And uh, real time, it gives uh, the indication where exactly your car and also helps you maintain that safety features. That's powerful. Can you walk us through, show us these eight cameras and also, do these cameras fully cover blind spots and are there no more blind spots in the Tesla? Yes, it actually covers 360 degrees. Uh, let's go through the different cameras and how Tesla does that. Uh, let's start with the first one here. As you can see, uh, just below the A-pillar, you can see the camera. It is actually pointing backwards uh, so that it can actually cover the blind spot. Uh, which answers your question, can it cover the blind spot? Answer is yes. You can see that uh, camera which is pointing towards the back. And you can see another camera here. Now, this is actually pointing to the front uh, in the B pillar. And uh, this camera actually um, tracks uh, uh, on, the, on the front uh, right side. And uh, as we go to the back, uh, there is a camera uh, just uh, below the Tesla logo, as you can see here. Uh, it's actually below the Tesla logo. Uh, this camera helps you actually uh, uh, see what is behind your car. Uh, when you are traveling as well as when you put the car into reverse mode and this is a very useful feature most of the cars has it but what is different in tesla uh, most of the cars uh, reverse camera works only when you put the car into reverse gear but tesla uh, this camera works all the time whether you park the car or whether uh, you are driving uh, for example if somebody uh, coming uh, from the behind and touches your car it is always recording no matter whether you're driving or you're put the car into the reverse mode. So this is the third camera. Uh, as you can see, uh, again, uh, on the other side, uh, on the B pillar, there's a fourth camera. Uh, again, it is uh, tracking the front left side of your car. And then similar to that side, uh, you have another camera here, uh, which is again tracking uh, the back left side of the car. Uh, very useful for uh, the uh, blind spot monitoring system of the Tesla. So that's five cameras, and you might be wondering where the other three cameras are. And uh, the answer to that is, as you can see here, uh, in the center of the windshield, uh, there are three cameras. Uh, you can ask the question, Darren, why there are three cameras, right? Uh, everywhere else, you'll see only one camera, but on the front, uh, you see uh, uh, three cameras at the same time, at the same place. The reason is that uh, obviously uh, Tesla uses these cameras for self-driving feature along with five other cameras. And when it is driving, there are a lot of things happening on the road, whether it is lane markings or whether it is uh, the traffic signals or whether it is the pedestrians or whether it is the traffic junctions, right? So you need additional set of eyes. Just like we have two eyes, Tesla has one more eye in the front. So it's a, it has a three eyes in the front and Tesla also has that uh, five other eyes that always watching. Uh, as a human, sometimes uh, it's impossible to actually keep track of what is happening on the left side, right side, front and back, but Tesla is always monitoring. Do all this information that Tesla monitors from the cameras, does it get sent to train Tesla's models and make it safer? What happens with all of that? Absolutely. Uh, they use the neural network uh, to train the algos, algorithms. All this data obviously anonymously goes into the Tesla uh, servers where they use the labeling uh, software to actually label these videos and the images and uh, improve the self-driving system. So this is the this is one of the safety feature uh, that actually uh, is a combination of hardware and software that gives a lot of safety features when you're driving the car. Uh, and also most important feature is the center of gravity. Uh, when you look at the gasoline engines or ice cars, the center of gravity is not exactly at the center of the car because you have the huge engine block, the weight of the car is at the front of the vehicle. So what happens uh, when there is a uh, rain or when you take a sudden turn? So obviously the load on the front will make you serve the uh, car or turn the car uh, and you lose the grip on the car very easily. But when you look at the Tesla, since there is no engine, the weight of the car is equally distributed and the entire battery pack is at the center of the car. So at the floor of the car, it is impossible to roll over this car. And many people uh, have seen in a lot of crash test videos, they tried pretty hard to roll over the Tesla and it was impossible to roll over the Tesla. So 
that gives uh, a lot of uh, confidence when you're driving especially through hilly sections or the curvy roads it just grips to the road because of that center of gravity every tesla has basically like a sunroof so people wonder like if it's all glass above me how safe is that in a collision what's your take i was about to come to that uh, point and uh, you asked that question in advance and let me tell you about this uh, glass roof as you can see from the windshield all the way uh, back to the uh, back windshield it's a single uh, plane of glass um, many people wonder what happens if there is a crash right uh, many people surprised to know it can actually take the weight of two fully grown african elephants many people doesn't know this uh, people think oh it's a glass what happens if i climb out of the glass or what happens if there is a crash or something falls into the glass will it break the answer to that question is uh, uh, people literally tested it and there is also a nice uh, tesla poster that tesla has published in the twitter some time back it can actually take two fully grown african elephants on top of it it, it still doesn't break now let's head into the car to look at the rest of the hardware and software and all the engineering marvel that makes this a safer car Let's start with uh, a simple thing like what happen if the door is open. Let's say if you start to drive, uh, it doesn't allow you to drive and it uh, constantly warns you. As you can see in the center console, uh, you can see that the door is open and uh, when I close the door, you can see I didn't properly close the door. So it still shows that door is open. So let me close the door again. As you can see now the door is closed. So it constantly reminds you that uh, uh, whether the door is closed or whether you are wearing the seat belts, not only just your seat belt, but also the seat belt at the back, including the child seat. You might be wondering how does Tesla do this? Now uh, Tesla do this because they have the sensors inside the seats. They can actually detect whether the person is sitting in the car or not by using the weight. Wow. So they have the weight sensors inside the seats and they will remind you that you have to wear the seat belt as you can see that here is a seat belt symbol that is uh, showing uh, to wear the seat belt what happens if i start to drive right let's say uh, uh, obviously uh, uh, when you start to drive and let's say if i put it in the drive mode uh, as you can see that uh, it is showing fast in the seat belt warning um, when you put the car into drive mode and it is also showing like how many passengers are in the car you can see from here uh, there are uh, two passengers including uh, you and me and we are both are not wearing the seat belts and it is showing now please wear the side seat belts before you drive the car so that's a simple feature but if you look at uh, the small small things here it's pretty fascinating it's just not showing that we are the seat belts but it is exactly showing which person in the car is not wearing the seat belt and if you try to drive it will give you a lot of alerts how safe is it to work on a touch screen when I'm driving, shouldn't, wouldn't buttons be safer, especially on low visibility at night? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, sometimes it is very distracting as well. Um, the answer to that question is actually, uh, it has different modes, like a dark mode and a light mode. Uh, so what happens if, if it is a, a sunny in the day, it is white, and when you start to drive, it automatically changes into the dark mode so that you don't get distracted by the light of the center console. And uh, an answer to your second question, uh, do you actually operate the center console when you're driving? The answer is no. Then you can ask the question, where are the touch buttons to operate? Uh, there is no touch buttons. The reason behind that is you don't want to touch any buttons when you're driving and you don't want to touch the screen when you're driving as well. Mm. Then you might be wondering then how do you operate some of the features? Like how do you turn on the lights and uh, how do you turn on the wipers or how do you check the AC temperature? All you can do using the voice. So what you can do is you can just press this button. As you can see, there's a microphone comes here. You can say things like, uh, for example, turn on the wipers. Obviously, uh, I've been speaking, but what happens is when you do that, it takes the command and turn on the wipers. So you don't need to touch any button uh, except this uh, uh, wheel button. And you can just say uh, uh, using your voice and you can turn on and turn off the things. I think. Uh, the heart of all this software is the computer behind the screen. Tesla has one of the most advanced computer in this car that is used to constantly update the features, which enables the security and also the other things. For example, what happened a few weeks back in the latest release, they released a feature where you can see the blind spot on your center console when you're driving. So let me show you that. 
So uh, when I put uh, the car into uh, dry mode, and for example, when I turn on the indicators, as you can see the blind spot coming in your center console. So it is at your eye level, you can easily see that blind spot uh, area in your center console. Using the external mirrors, it is almost impossible to see this kind of an angle. This is super useful, especially when you are changing the lanes or when you are taking the turns. Uh, especially we know sometimes the bikers will be next to you and almost they're uh, impossible to spot because of the blind spot and uh, generally the rule is you look after your shoulder uh, yes we do that whenever we stop but you're changing the lanes it's impossible to look behind the shoulder so this is super useful and this they have released only a couple of weeks back earlier it was not there so this is a powerful example of software making the car even safer even after you bought it. So you may have owned it for a couple of months and software just makes the car better. Can you walk us through what are some of the core safety features that a driver could use when it comes to Tesla software? Sure, let's go through the features one by one. Actually, there are many features. So let's start with uh, the simple features, right? As you can see uh, here, now uh, the lights, uh, you, can, you can change it to automatic. That means uh, you don't need to uh, remember that you have to turn on the lights when it is dark, especially in Singapore roads, most of the roads are well lit. Sometimes uh, you don't uh, uh, need to turn on the lights when you see outside, but actually you need to turn on the lights according to the uh, safety book uh, of the road regulations. So when you turn on this, uh, based on the time of the day, based on the intensity of the light outside, it automatically turns on. So this is one of the safety feature. Uh, you can also see uh, many safety features, for example, like child lock, you can turn on, turn off. Uh, this is very common. You can also see this in other cars as well. But uh, how you do this is uh, pretty simple. You can use again the voice to do it, or you can touch and do it before you drive the car. Uh, you can also see uh, many other features. As you can see here, this particular camera symbol, it has a red icon. That means it's actually recording the entire 360 degrees of the car right now and it does all the time whether you park the car and go to get some groceries you want to make sure that nobody is touching your car or when you are driving the car it is recording and um, in us you can actually access this footage live uh, in your phone uh, that they have also released a few uh, weeks back. Uh, that feature has not yet came to Singapore, but it has been released in uh, US. For example, you park the car uh, in a shady area and then you go to get some quick groceries and um, it is always recording and you can actually see what is happening uh, uh, 360 degrees using your mobile app. Uh, the most important feature, very useful feature is the sentry mode, as you can see here. Uh, if you turn on this, as you can see that uh, and now it became red. Now it is actually recording uh, all, using all the eight cameras. When you park the car and when you go away, it will be constantly monitoring. And what happens if somebody comes near to your car? Uh, there are multiple things happens. It will flash, flash the headlights, uh, making sure that warning them, please don't come near my car, right? Near the car. Uh, and then what happens if they come and touch the car? It will start to beep, right? What happens if somebody gains unauthorized access into the car? It will play very loud sound. Literally, uh, your eardrums will get affected and then you have to get out of the car. And uh, it also sends the notifications back to your phone. And uh, when you come back and uh, uh, open the center console, you will see different kind of uh, messages. Some are green, some are yellow. Sometimes it can be red. What does it mean? For example, is there a minor event with somebody just walking uh, near your car or somebody touching and shaking your car or somebody broke into your car? So you can, based on the intensity of the events, it'll show in different colors. In other regions like the US, the sentry camera has been used to spot people who use the keys or the key a Tesla or scratch a Tesla. Do you have any personal stories of sentry mode being useful to yourself or people you know? Um, 
not much uh, in terms of personal story but yes i've seen many videos online especially there is a channel called uh, tesla bam bam cam uh, you can see a lot of crash videos and you have seen uh, a lot of people uh, trying to vandalize the cars and literally many people has been convicted uh, yeah, for damaging the tesla because uh, entire all their actions and their face everything is recorded because tesla is recording using all the eight cameras uh, like 360 degrees this is a case where both it's not just hardware and software operating separately but really both coming together in a more intelligent way to really add a lot of value to drivers and increase our safety as you can see here um you can see you can you can set the speed limits of the car uh, you can also do uh, an offset of uh, the speed limit for example let's say uh, if the speed limit is 50 then uh, do you want to get alerted exactly at the 50 when you cross that speed or when you want to a little bit have an offset there are different kinds of uh, speed limit warnings you can see uh, just display the speed limit or give a sound uh, using the audible alert that you know you're going above the speed limit also you can see a new feature that they have released that we have seen automatic blind spot camera show the side camera when turn signal is engaged so you can turn on turn on this feature let's say you don't want uh, that uh, camera showing up in your center console when you turn on the signal you, if you don't prefer it mm -hmm. uh, you can turn it off but i like to turn on almost every single safety feature uh, that's why it is turned on uh, not only that uh, it can also give you a blind spot collision warning chime not only just show in the screen but also it can give an audible alert that somebody is in your blind spot drive carefully this is very useful uh, um, i can relate in one incident uh, one day i was di driving in uh, expressway i was uh, going near changi and uh, i was trying to change the lane obviously i turned on the indicator and uh, uh, i was looking at the mirrors um, suddenly one bike with a high speed entered uh, lane next to me and try kind of trying to do uh, uh, lane split not in the middle of the lane so it immediately gave me audible alarm saying that hey somebody is at uh, your blind spot so immediately i was like okay uh, let me take a look at it carefully again once again before doing the lane change and i can see a biker guy coming from the far uh, distance so it can he is not actually in my blind spot but he's coming with a little bit of speed and uh, tesla can able to detect uh, even before he entered the side of the car this is all possible because of the software this is all possible because of uh, the eight cameras that we have seen around the car constantly monitoring and uh, actually i get more updates in the tesla software than on my iphone you might uh, find it very surprising I, as you can see a, a new update is already uh, available uh, it shows in the yellow icon so there's a new update that is coming in that i have to download so they almost release update like every few weeks once sometimes even um, uh, multiple times within a week so it's really cool how the car is improving itself so much. Uh, some people think of safety also as security and in Singapore where we live right now, we hear recent news like uh, let's say bank scams where people fish and get your account details. Could these intelligent cars because they're connected to internet, could they be hacked or could our details be fished and someone else gets access to our car? What's your take? That's a great question uh, Darren. Uh, what happens if uh, somebody tries to get hold of your mobile? Can they actually unlock your car? Uh, the answer is uh, uh, yes and no. There are many features. Let's say if somebody tries to get hold of my mobile and uh, they try to use the Bluetooth to access a car, they can get inside the car. But what happens once they get inside the car? As you can see, uh, when I try to drive the car, it immediately asks for the pin, the four digit pin that I have set, and it asks for the pin to start the car. Mm. So it's an added uh, two factor authentication that enables the car um, to be super safe. There are so many features uh, like this. For example, let's say if, the, if I put the car into drive mode, and uh, if I try to uh, get on from the car, we have seen so many videos, especially in Singapore, in the gas cars, people have forgot the car, put the car into park mode, and they just car just rolled away because they forgot to put the car in the park mode. Yes. Let's see if uh, we try to do that in Tesla. What happens? Do you know what happens? Let's see. Let's say now the car is in drive mode. Yes. Right. And uh, if I forgot to put the car in the park mode, and if I open the car, what happens? 
it automatically goes into park mode. Wow. I don't need to put the car into park mode. But I always put the car into the park mode before I leave the car. Even if you forget to put the car into park mode, yeah. it automatically goes into park mode because it knows that you have opened the door and you are leaving the car. That is super cool. If you've heard news of that Tesla saving lives, there was an article where a Model S went down a cliff and the passengers just came out with minor scratches. More recently, there was a video where a Model Y avoided the T-bone by just doing a moose maneuver with very quick acceleration in a urban city road. Do you have any personal stories of how Tesla has saved the life or helped you and your loved ones? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, now, all the stories are very true, like we discussed initially, right? Whenever there's a crash, the Tesla car absorbs all the impact, not the person inside the car, because there are a lot of spots where there is an energy absorption containers, you can call it. Like we have seen in the front, there is no engine. Uh, let me share one instance. I was driving in Archer Road one day. It is uh, around the afternoon. Generally, not much traffic. I was, I was driving within the speed limit. Suddenly, I heard a warning, the chime sound. I was like, what went wrong? I mean, there is no one in my blind spots and everything is cool. Um, then I came back to home and then I reviewed the footage. Uh, what just happened? Why did it sound alarm? And then in the footage, I can see that there is a car uh, in front of in front of me. That is that is the second car in front of me. Uh, and next to that car, there is a car trying to do a lane split. So the car in front in front of me did the sudden little bit of braking and Tesla detected that. So small things really, really uh, actually helps improve the safety of the car when you drive. Tesla is constantly innovating on the software and one of the things it's known for is full self-driving and autopilot. But some people have wondered, is that a bit dangerous because it's not, it's still a beta product, it's not fully complete and even the beta features aren't rolled out outside of the US yet. And some drivers may have the wrong perception that they don't have to pay attention or some people may misuse it. What's your take on that? That's a very important question, Darren, because people think uh, when Tesla says it's a full self-driving, that Tesla can drive itself. Uh, the answer is no. Uh, let's talk about uh, something in the aviation, right? Um, we all know that uh, most part of the flight is actually done by autopilot. It, it is called autopilot, yes. right? Uh, but uh, some of the aspects, like for example, when the plane is taxiing or when, when the plane is taking off, the pilots are still in control. And especially when there is a turbulence, still the pilots take control of the uh, airplane. Uh, similarly, when you're driving the car as well, it can do uh, probably 80% of the things 20% of the things still you need to focus. Mm. It is not completely hands-free at this moment. In future, for sure, like you have seen in iRobot movie, there won't be any steering wheel and uh, or it, 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 it might be hidden, right? But we are still not there. We still have to focus on the road and we still have to be have full control of the car when you are doing uh, autopilot or full self-driving uh, feature of the car when you are using that. I think it's absolutely true and the analogy that Anil gave like autopilot coming from the aviation industry like they've got air traffic control uh, the density of planes is far less than the density of cars on the road over here and even if this technology is 99.9% .9 safe we really need to get to 99.9999% safe which is a factor harder it's very hard because of all the edge cases that you have to train for machine learning so Anil was talking about how all these cameras would anonymously train and help Tesla get better here. Okay, so as all you can see, there's the visualization and proximity sensor and right. As you can see, sometimes it is gray, sometimes it is yellow. What does it mean? It means how near are you to the obstacle? It will change from gray to yellow to red. Tesla is working very hard to further improve the visualization. Uh, those videos in the US where you see full self-driving beta, the visualization gives you a much broader map of the environment. Absolutely, as you can see here, you can also see the lane markings on the console, uh, the lines, whether it's a continuous line or it is uh, uh, split lines. So. 
it gives a lot of confidence when full self driving becomes a reality Elon has said a few times that Tesla's software and technology it's quite optimized for California how well is it running in Singapore where does lane markings parking boxes uh, it's a very good question um, uh, I think uh, let's take an example of uh, human driving right let's say if you are driving in Singapore can you drive in US most of the time answer is yes because driving is safe uh, again sometimes the lane markings are different signals are different and everything that's where the learning comes from the neural network right uh, so every time when you are driving the car Tesla is constantly improving uh, uh, right now it, it is also learning it's just not uh, using that features it's also learning um, as you can see right now speed limit is 70 but suddenly it changed to 50 because the reason is there is a caution signs on the road because there is some road work is going on even though the actual speed limit is 70 uh, in the west coast highway uh, it changed the speed limit to 50 because the reason is obviously it want to alert you that there is some uh, work going on and you need to be a little careful when you're driving tesla has a very strong foundation of safety yet it also has one of the fastest accelerations of any passenger car out there it matches or rivals and sometimes beats some supercars. What makes the performance Model 3 accelerate so quickly? Uh, that's a great question, uh, Darren. Uh, so let's talk about uh, how the gasoline engine works, right? Uh, there is a fuel uh, that goes into the fuel mixture and then it combusts and then it rotates the shaft and there are gears which actually uh, uh, controls the speed of the car and that power goes from gears all the way to the uh, drive shaft and then to your wheels at the back, right? If you see, this process takes anywhere between a uh, few hundreds of milliseconds. The moment you start the car and the uh, fuel burns and the air mixture happens and then uh, the, uh, the engine blocks, uh, the pistons kick in and then the energy goes from gears to the drive shaft to the wheels. There's a lot of lag, right? When you look at Tesla, uh, it's just like instantaneous because the motors are fixed to the uh, wheel axle and it's almost like how much time does it take for you to turn on the light? It just, you flip the switch, it's on. The same concept applies here. For example, how much does time does it take for you to light a lamp? Mm -hmm. right you have to put the mastic on and then you have to uh, uh lit the fire and then s slowly the light flame comes up right yeah so that's the same analogy that you take uh, lighting a lamp and switching on the lamp that's why it's uh, super fast and also uh, the thing is uh, the you, you cannot compare the fuel to electric energy right um, so there's a lot of loss of energy yes. in the combustion engines and uh, uh, the efficiency of the electric uh, uh, motors are far higher than the combustion engines so that's why you get that uh, 0 to 100 3.3 seconds so evs are faster than ice cars but teslas are faster than most evs what's different or special about a tesla compared to other evs uh, again the reason behind that is the software they are literally monitoring every aspect of the car using the software for example how fast can you charge the batteries how fast can you discharge the batteries? And uh, so they even improved the mileage of the uh, the range of the car. Uh, you won't call it a mileage. Your mileage you call it in the gas cars. In the, the range of the car, they've improved through the software update because how they actually manage the heat of the batteries and everything. So that actually enables that uh, kind of speeds. That acceleration is amazing. If we go on tracks or if let's say we go on major highways, for normal urban city driving, what are the practical benefits of that acceleration? Actually, this is one of the fastest car in the world. I can say, uh, according to the rankings, it is uh, 12th or anywhere between 10th to 15th car, fastest car in the world. There are not many cars that can go 0 to 100 in 3.3 seconds. Uh, again, the other the Tesla model is played is, is the fastest car in the world. It can go 0 to 100 in 1.9 seconds. Uh, so you need to be responsible when you have that much uh, kind of power. Absolutely, in city driving, 
it is not that much useful the acceleration but especially in the express ways when you are driving sometimes you need to do the overtakes sometimes you need to do it uh, quickly and decisively uh, if you have a low power car it is uh, highly uh, you need to be very careful and time it but with this kind of performance you can do that overtakes quickly and move into the lane desired lane and uh, you can avoid uh, blocking that lane or you can avoid uh, blocking the traffic behind you that's one of the feature that i can think is quite useful with this kind of acceleration uh, obviously you have to stay within the speed limits um, given the acceleration of the car uh, because this car can go easily 0 to 60 km per hour in i don't know maybe 1.5 seconds 2 seconds yeah so the moment uh, you step on the gas pedal you will be above 60 so you need to be very very careful uh, and the second uh, place where i think this kind of acceleration is super helpful i've seen some videos where the cars behind have lost control and trying to collide from behind and Tesla's automatically accelerated a little bit to avoid that collision so and move into the other lane so maybe that's another area where it is super useful uh, so apart from the safety aspect of uh, the acceleration obviously there's a fun uh, aspect as well uh, let's say if you have a kids who like the cars and uh, they want to go on a let's say roller coaster this can be a roller coaster again you have to stay within the speed limits given the power of the car even 0 to 50 km per hour is like a roller coaster in this car. Forget about 0 to 100. Anil, thank you so much for showing us a look at the car from a safety perspective and also the crazy acceleration that it has. The huge potential here, as Anil mentioned, with great power. It's all of us who watched Spider-Man recently. Hopefully in theaters if you get a chance to. Great responsibility. It's quite ironic that this is one of the fastest cars in the world, yet also one of the safest cars in this world. Anil, any closing words for Tesla buyers who are considering this car? Um, I think whichever car you buy, doesn't matter if it's a Tesla or any other electric vehicle, or even for the matter of the fact for an uh, ICE car, gasoline engine, uh, first and foremost thing is the safety, right? So you should be looking at uh, how many stars rating it got uh, in the crash test and what kind of safety features it has. So make sure you uh, review that before uh, deciding which car you would like to go for. And there is a community of Tesla owners here already for you. Wherever you are in the world, if you're a Tesla owner in Singapore or looking to get one, I'll put a link down in the description below where you can find the Tesla Owners Singapore Club. There's a Telegram group to chat with other owners and there's also a Facebook page to get updated on the latest EV and Tesla news in the country. Thank you for watching this video. If you found this video insightful, it made you have a better perception of Tesla's safety, please click the like button. If you want to see more videos on Tesla, hit subscribe. Thank you for joining us and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.